Yeah, I won't lie, guys. Kind of in maintenance mode till 4.6. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be chill until then, talking about whatever. Maybe you guys want to see me talk about something. I know Venti's gateway to Celestia, guys, in here somewhere. <laughs> I kind of like today, with the second part of the five biggest unsolved mysteries in Genshin Impact. We did a first part, so if you see a question missing here, odds are it's in that other video. But once again, these are in order of importance. So with that said, I mean, let's just jump right into it. I've got no, no special intro, no funny intro, no tricks up my sleeves. And so with that said, let's start off with number five. Why didn't the unknown god seal the Abyss Sibling's powers? This question is tricky for a number of different reasons. The first being, we must examine the two different fates the twins suffered after getting put down like dirty dogs at the hands of our beloved sustainer of heavenly principles. What happened after they lost is odd. The sustainer purposefully wards off whoever you pick whilst immediately entrapping the other in cubes. The cubes then can join, revealing one translucent cube emitting a yellow glow. The sustainer then displays two reactions to the cube she has in her hand. The first being a wide-eyed expression, just sort of marveling at what she's got. And the second, oddly enough, being a look of boredom, bordering on disgust, almost disappointment even. Please look at me like that. She seems woefully unimpressed, and it's a look very different compared to the one from earlier. The protagonist then initiates an attack on the sustainer while she was looking at the cube, an attack that's the same color as the light from the cube. What happens next me, is even more bizarre, as if we slow it down, we can see what looks like a very similar translucent cube with the same golden glow from earlier, vibrating in the sustainer's hands before it materializes into our classic black and red cubes. However, this isn't the same cube from earlier, given the very next shot shows it's in her other hand. The black and red cubes then trap the protagonist, and in the blink of an eye, a 500 years goes by just like that. Don't you just hate when that happens, man? You just you sleep for 500 years. They wake somewhere into vast with their sword missing and a seal placed on their powers. However, that wasn't the case for the sibling, who seemingly was sent back to Tevats almost immediately. While we aren't aware of their exact movements, the earliest points they appeared in Tevats history following their battle versus the Sustainer was at the Sea of Flowers, where they and Dane would head off to search for one another's fates. However, what's even more baffling is the next time we run into the sibling, we see they have both their sword and their original power, indicating the seal was either broken or it was never placed. For those thinking it's the former and hypothesize the sinner may have been the one to break it, think again. Before the Abyss sibling even joined the Abyss Order, they had their original power, as shown in the Kari Bear Quest cutscene, where we see white stuff coming off their clothes. <laughs> that sounded so much better when I wrote it. <laughs> so why then is this the case? What if it's because the Abyss sibling never had a seal on their powers? because they never needed one, because the sustainer was disappointed, disappointed with what she saw because she got the wrong one. While trying to entrap the powers of the descender, she messed up, hence her change in expression towards the cube from bewilderment to abhorrence. Given their difference in status, this could explain why one was able to have their powers whilst the other had their seals, but this still wouldn't explain why it took 500 years for them to wake up. I mean, at the end of the day, this is all just speculation. As some of you guys might have known, the original opening cutscene was actually supposed to be something much darker than what we ended up getting. Daitolani in any case, the mystery of what exactly happened to the twins following their encounter with the unknown god and why the Abyss Sibling's powers were seemingly never sealed remains Blue's Clues. 
he like it, but he don't respect his Christmas. Ooh, yikes. The fourth greatest mystery, or I guess it's the ninth, technically. <laughs> Where are the sovereigns, lords of the old worlds? They were the strongest of the dragons and numbered seven, yet despite this, they stood no match against it. They stood no match against its greatness, its benevolence, and its omnipotence. Some may call it God, yet in order to dutifully sing its praises, the masses must do so correctly. So rise and join me, as it has been far too long since we last sang the praises of the primordial one, a progenitor god, hailing from beyond the stars. With regards to the Sovereigns as a whole, all we know for sure is quotes following the demise of the ancient Seven Sovereigns, a new generation of Sovereigns is presently being born. As it stands right now, we can verifiably state the location of two Dragon Sovereigns, the Hydro and the Dendro. If the Dendro Dragon is the original, whilst the Hydro is a reincarnation cursed to return as a human, but as for the Cryo, Electro, Pyro, Geo, or Animo, We've no idea. Now, there have been, you know, some names floating around, namely Ajdaha as the Geo Sovereign. I haven't seen anything that definitely makes me think he's without a doubt the Geo Sovereign, namely because it feels like everyone's claims regarding this just boils down to Ajdaha is old. And he's been called a Dragon Lord. And it's like, yeah, 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 a lot of things in Tibet are old. And regarding the, the Dragon Lord thing, hell, in, in Chinese, Beto is called a Dragon Lord. The, the other the other is Devalin as the Animo Sovereign just because he's a he's a dragon and monster. I don't, I don't know. I, I personally don't like the idea that these two are sovereigns, if for no other reason than simply because it'd feel awkward just to revisit them under this new pretense in the future. I mean, guys, look. Think about our intro to a pep in Nervalette. A pep we had to visit because even without its authority, it was in danger of destroying all of Sumeru as a side effect of her not being well. And as for Nervalette, it rains when he cries. Now you're trying to tell me that Devalin, who was going out of his way to attack Mondstadt, could only muster up some small tornadoes? That's it? Sovereign, my ass. Nervalette seemingly knows where the other sovereigns are, but isn't very keen on visiting them. I lost many memories from the moment I was born. The Primordial Sea, for example. I can only vaguely recall its connection to me, but I am unaware of what that connection is exactly. Perhaps the elemental dragons of other nations may have some form of an answer. However, they are scattered across all of Tevat. Abruptly visiting could very well pose an unpredictable risk. True. Some of them have very unique personalities, too. You didn't even tell us where they were. You could have just told us where they were. That's all I'm saying, my nigga. But it could be we know where one of the missing sovereigns is. What if... They're trapped. What if the Electro Sovereign is trapped underground and the Sakura abhors in quest which saw us heal the Thunder Sakura? Miyuki remarked, quote, Please don't get careless. The Thunder Sakura being weakened makes the situation very dangerous indeed. After all, these trees serve to suppress the one who lies beneath. Although I feel like I feel like if 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 if, if the Electro Sovereign was at was at risk of busting out, I think that calls for the matter of the Archon to come down and, and deal with it. So this is all just rampant speculation on my part. <laughs> but it's for this very reason that the current status of the remaining Sovereigns remains blues. Clues. As for the next mystery, it's the most recent, and it's who is the third Descender. Now, prior to Skirk cluing us in on the fact that the Gnosis are made from the remains of the Third Descender, we genuinely had no information whatsoever on the Third Descender. They were the biggest enigma in Genshin Impact, with the only theory being Alice was the Third Descender. <sighs> of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? However, with this new piece of information, that seems highly unlikely. However, even with this knowledge that the Third Descender could be dead or at the very least in pieces, doesn't help to clue us in on the Third Descender's identity. Depending on your interpretation of Neverlet's story on Visions, 
your answer may vary. Quote, severely wounded in the Great War of Vengeance, the usurper had their functions ruined and can no longer use their absolute authority to suppress the original order of this world. To continue to subdue and control the resentments and loathing of the world, the usurper and one who came after created the Gnosis together. So it came to be that an order was made to be upheld, and thus did humans come to only possess these seven remembrances, and all fragments of the primordial were driven to devour each other. Well, some think one who came after is the second descender, and thus the second descender worked with the primordial one to create the Gnosis from the third descender, I personally skew the other way and think one who came after was the third descender who sacrificed himself to the heavenly principles to keep order in this world. All we really know for sure regarding the third descender is that they, like the Traveler, also had high elemental compatibility. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the third descender. But as for their identity, that remains blues. Clues. The second greatest mystery, or I guess we're up to seven now, is what exactly is forbidden knowledge? Forbidden knowledge, or crack for dragons, was introduced to Tifats by none other than that bastard crackhead dragon king and Nibelung, hoping it would help turn the tides against the heavenly principles. It's been called the power of darkness, and a lot of the would-be bad guys seemingly hope it can help them break through the shackles of this world, yet every time it's been called upon, it unleashes an apocalypse. Nibelung used it. Apocalypse. A Pep used it. Apocalypse. Deshritz used it. Apocalypse. Conria used it. Apocalypse. Quite literally, the only answer we have regarding what it is is from Ruka Devata, the so-called god of wisdom, who doesn't even answer the fucking question. It's a kind of knowledge that doesn't belong to this world, and a form of truth that can't be understood. It came from the very bottom of the abyss. Even I could never understand it. This isn't, this is, this is a non-answer. This is what we call a non-answer, okay? Based on Apep's testimony, it seems to be wisdom that none can process, even a being such as herself. When Alathmar's proud kingdom collapsed, I swallowed him whole as I agreed, and absorbed his elemental power. However, what I gained was no benefit. No. I gained the apocalypse. I used up all my strength just trying to keep the pain under control. I had no energy to analyze the knowledge he had accumulated. But if all forbidden knowledge is, is wisdom, then how? How are any of you hoping dark wisdom will grant you enough power to defeat the heavenly principles? What is this dark wisdom? Who wrote it? What does it contain? Why does it only lead to apocalypse? In any case, forbidden knowledge is clearly not something to be trifled with, given it's even sent the primordial one into a frenzy, quotes, and though the invaders brought war to my former kin, they also brought about illusions that could break through the shackles to the lands. But the master of the heavens, consumed by fear for the rising tide of delusion and breakthroughs, sent down the divine nails to mend the land, laying waste to the mortal realm. Now, I'm not one to simp, personally, but clearly this must be some bad mamma jamma if even the primordial one is not a fan of it. But and despite it playing a big role in the world of Tivat, what forbidden knowledge really is remains blues. Clues. And as for the number one mystery on this list, it's perhaps the thing that has influenced the plot of Genshin Impacts like no other. What happened to the Cryo Archon during the Cataclysm? This is perhaps the most puzzling one, given the Cryo Archon, while well, the same Archon that ascended during the Archon War, is at the very least the same Archon prior to the Cataclysm, so at the very least, she should have, you know, been familiar with Celestia and their ways, yet despite experiencing the Cataclysm, like every other Archon, well, fucking dead ones, <laughs> her perception was altered so badly she's declared war against the world and wants to watch it burn away. Quote, Sorry to also have you shoulder the grievances of the world. Since you could endure my bitter colds, you must have the desire to burn. Then burn away the old worlds for me. This is despite the fact that the Archons, who also lived through the event, came out fine like Morex and Barbados. Uh, how should I put this? 
500 years ago, I knew her well. But I can't say the same is true now. You see, a certain catastrophe happened 500 years ago. And after that, she cut off all ties with me. We know she didn't have a special mission like Ruka Devata. At that time, the Seven were all summoned to the nation of Conria. Except for me. So what could she have witnessed or experienced that was so horrific and personal to her she's willing to create the most powerful army ever assembled, attack her fellow gods and their nation, and even overlook the Doctor? To see her rebellion through to the end, even if it means isolating herself from the wishes of others. She will soon be kicking off a grand war like three others because her feelings were hurt during Conrad. You think the average nigga gives a fuck Celestia is in charge? They chillin' right now, enjoying life. The life that they were given, eating food, the food that they were given, hugging fathers on festivals, nigga, they don't, they don't, they don't give a fuck this dumb bitch wants to challenge the divine. Just because she's sad. It's hinted as her ideal was once love, but according to Zhang Li's reaction, this may have changed. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame. As does that which the Cryo Archon once. <sighs> yes. These details are masterfully done. Ask Wanderer, and it could be her love has now become a sin. Ask Child, and he'll tell you her love is the reason she's doing this, and then, in about a week, we'll see what happens when we ask Arla Kino, but <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't have high hopes for her being objective in this matter. I mean, it's not like the other two were, anyway. In any case, given the Saritsa is a world away, encased in an icy fortress, with an army at her beck and call, plus ten Harbingers, we won't find out her side of the story anytime soon, so the question of what happened to the Cryo Archon during the Cataclysm remains blues. Clues. Fuck if you like it, but he don't respect his Christmas. Ooh, yeah, I